Hello friends and welcome to the first comment response video from Idea Project. You might recognize my voice from the first episode. I'm Parker, the, the face that you saw on screen at the desk, and I have with me a few friends. Well, hello there. Um, my name's Mace Kerb. Uh, usually I go by Mace for brevity. Uh, I'm one of the moderators slash general channel managers. I'm Ingenious. I'm also a channel manager. Um, I don't get up to much else around here. I occasionally contribute to things, but I mainly just keep people on track. I was here the whole time. My name is Brock Mendez. Slash attack raccoon on anywhere that matters. Hi there, I'm Marty Hedgemal. I am one of the script writers and the grad students are just part of the community and yeah, got to, got to be a part of the team. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Oriana and I am currently the, the creative lead for the next episode, and I do stuff. Hi. Much Think linked us to a video uh, by Mark Brown about the uh, magic of the first Legend of Zelda, the Game Maker's Toolkit. It's it's basically bringing, because this video actually came out uh, before Breath of the Wild did, and it's basically relating uh, how Breath of the Wild is an attempt at sort of getting back to the roots of the first Zelda game, which is, in a lot of ways, very different from all the ones that have come past it or come after it. Uh, it's it's actually a really good video. I, I probably am not doing uh, I'm not doing it very good justice, to be honest. Yeah, Mark Brown has a lot of really interesting things to say on it. I'm just I'm not sure how well it applies to here because we weren't quite talking about the same thing. James McKenzie wrote a very long and thoughtful comment about uh, Skyward Sword being the bad version of the game. He took issue with that, saying that he had a lot of fun with it. And I actually went and commented on my personal account that, yeah, I agree. Skyward Sword is a lot of fun. It's a different type of game, but it's very on rails, um, very just do, do this, go here, beat the guy, and, and you're done. Just A, B, C, D. Um, whereas Breath of the Wild is almost the opposite of that structure-wise, where it's everything's laid out and you can go wherever you want and do it in any order. Um, and so to kind of bring that point home, I think I linked to Aaron Hansen's video, Ego Raptor's video, about Legend of Zelda's um, being good and bad. And uh, he really trashes Skyward Sword in that video, but I, I came to agree with the philosophy on the structure there. Relating back to a completely different series, actually, for a second, um, Metroid is one of my most favorite series of all time ever. And the thing about that is uh, the first Metroid game I ever played was Prime 3, which is generally considered to be probably one of the weaker ones. And in much the same way as James McKenzie does here with Skyward Sword, it's you know, it's it's the first one, and that's that's my favorite on some level. Even though it's on, even though it's still kind of a terrible game. The order in which you play them really does have a lot of effect on your personal opinion of these things. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. It's partly the nostalgia of like being at a younger age and kind of going back to that feeling, but also it's your introduction to the entire franchise, and so Metroid is a huge universe and that was your first look at it so of course you have fond memories of yeah. it yeah i mean there's similar things in legend of zelda like a lot of people don't like majora's mask i think it's probably the best zelda game i haven't played breath of the wild honestly um but majora's mask is one of my favorites but some people are i guess looking for something different when they come to a zelda game and that doesn't make them wrong yeah, I definitely agree with that. That Majora's Mask has the same type of "well, I'm not holding your hand" attitude. It's uh, you have to figure it out, and that's appealing to me as like a tinkerer and like a explorer type uh, motivation for me. Um, but sometimes you do just want a Disneyland ride. You just want to see the things and do the things, and then pack it up when you're done. Neither one's better than the other. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I largely agree with that. I actually don't like Majora's Mask because Termina feels so contrived to me in a way that no other Zelda world that I've played has. I just, I don't like how the world is, how Hyrule Termina Field is basically a circle that's split into four different quadrants 
<laughs> everything else. Oh, it's all o'clock. That I do agree with. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little weird. Yeah. Yeah, I want to add something that Rose wrote in here. She's not able to okay. speak on the mic, but uh, she said Breath of the Wild was her first interaction with the Zelda series, and as someone who didn't grow up playing video games, Breath of the Wild was a perfect introduction. So I, I agree. I think that's pretty cool that that was her first um, in-depth look at any video game, and it was such a deep and wide game. Um, oh, I'm happy to, to represent the, uh, the pastime in that way. And in the middle, James said, this made me wonder whether the essence of a Zelda game changes from person to person. That's an interesting question. What are your thoughts on that? I think to a point, it does change, because my personal first one I beat was Twilight Princess, though I played Link to the Past before then. And so I have a very clear sense of the kind of art style and the kind of tone that make up a Zelda game, which made me not really like Skyward Sword, but absolutely adore Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I would agree. I think any given experience at all is unique to the person having it, just from any moment to moment, which is reductionist and almost meaningless to say it that way. But yeah, of course, every Zelda game and the series as a whole is different for every person, depending on everything about where they came from and how they experienced it yeah what, what's the thing that everyone says uh your favorite mario kart is always your first mario kart? <laughs> yeah all the ones with numbers are my favorite <laughs> um to, to sort of add a counterpoint to that i i really don't think obviously the experience of it changes from person to person but i'm not quite as sold on whether the essence of it changes because like with with you know, extreme examples, but uh, Skyward Sword versus uh, Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild, you're going to be... The fact is, you're free to do whatever you want, full stop, so you're going to do whatever you want. So for some people, that might be uh, fishing. For others, that might be, I don't know, running up to Ganon and killing him with nothing but a fish. Um, but the thing is, the essence of it is always more or less total freedom. Whereas with something like Skyward Sword, you're going to be going through, you know, the, the checklist. Okay. So I have to go here and talk to this guy. And then I have to go to this dungeon and fight this boss. And then I have to go here and talk to this guy and yada, yada, yada. And as much as yes, everyone can and does play in their own specific way, there's going to be, there's going to be the, the essence of it all that sort of ties it all together. Cause you're still playing the same game, even if you're, doing it in a completely different way. I, I think if it. you asked a hundred Zelda players to write one word that they thought was the essence, and, and like you're saying, you can make your own game out of anything, but if they were you know, genuinely trying to cooperate and give the, the right answer in their minds, I think you'd get almost a hundred unique answers. Right. They, they might not just say freedom or exploration, they would, you know, there's lore and there's oh. art style and there's music, so many other things mixed in. If it was one word that I'd have to say is essence, I would say it's adventure. Um, and there's, there's definitely other things that go on top of it that maybe not be like optional, but um, it could still be core to The Legend of Zelda. But um, I don't know. It's, it feels like arguing semantics. Like everyone's going to have different, you know, levels of things that they can tolerate. Like people who like Twilight Princess can tolerate a lot more tutorials than I can. Mm -hmm. um, um, and at that point, it's up to taste. Um, but I, I wouldn't say tutorials are the essence of Zelda either. Yeah, actually, I'd agree with that. I think we'd get a whole lot of adventure listed if we asked 100 random people to define Zelda in one word or less, which actually is interesting to me because, well, Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild are two very different adventures. I don't think you can honestly say Skyward Sword is less of an adventure than Breath of the Wild is. It's just a more directed adventure M yeah. much more directed adventure yeah that's like saying the hobbit isn't an adventure because it's a book that you're not in control of toribisu random made this ridiculously long but wonderful comment with lots of 
lots of different arguments and lots of external links to YouTube videos. So we've put them together into a playlist so you can check it out. We got a few different comments saying that we didn't have enough academic sources and our argument was weak. We totally agree. We wanted to get something out and we are going to address these concerns very thoroughly in future episodes. Um, but thank you for the feedback. Uh, so as some of you might know, if you're on the discord, I'm actually uh, more or less in charge of getting the next episode put together along with Oriana. And we, we're, we're really taking this feedback to heart. Uh, as Oriana tells me, we've already got references to, uh, let me see my pronunciation guides, uh, Frega Wittgenstein, I think, and Sartre. Oh, that we didn't go over Majora's Mask. Yeah, because we said we said every game has the Master Sword and every game has Ganon and Zelda, but it's not set in Hyrule. It's it's an oddball, and that's that's correct. That is pretty interesting. Um, Majora's Mask doesn't have a lot of things that are very um, quote unquote Zelda, <laughs> um, but there's also a lot of Zelda games that are kind of like that. Um, what are the Game Boy ones? Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons. Um, also, Link's Awakening is really bad on that. Yeah. Yeah, there's... I mean, I don't think anyone would deny that they're... Zelda. <laughs> but, um, you know, may maybe that's the crux of something that that is, in essence, um, you know, it doesn't need the Master Sword to be... A Zelda game. Uh, it doesn't need Ganon as the big bad to be a Zelda game. Um, those are things that you identify with a Zelda game, but it's not the essence. Yeah, this sort of goes to the uh, ship of Theseus that um, who was that Toribisu Random brought up that mm -hmm. um, the interchangeable parts, not just replacing boards on a ship over time, and is it the same ship? But if this game doesn't have the Master Sword, and that game has a boat, and this game is, you know, they're all have maybe nothing in common at the at the center of this very few elements in common to every single game over the years um, but they all have many things in common and they all have a feeling in common yeah. and so in my mind certain zelda ripoff games are almost included in this zelda feel that uh, star fox adventures animal planet or dinosaur planet and a lot of games that are very heavily inspired by zelda I would consider have that Zelda essence, even if they're not official, obviously. A gun is a bunch of different parts put together. And how do you say that this gun is the same as another gun or different from another gun? If you replace the stock, if you replace the barrel, you pick a part and say, this part's the gun, this part's going to have the number on it. No matter what else you do with the gun, as long as this part is the original, then this is the gun. Yeah, and the chassis of a car has the VIN number on it. That's mm -hmm. interesting. But you can tie it to one specific piece. Yeah. Uh, the human brain, possibly. <laughs> yeah, that might be an interesting follow-up episode, just how we do categorizations in general. How do solutions to the ship of Theseus problem? We have a comment from Mavka Luminosity. And he says, this moment right here is the moment at which Idea Channel has been completed. It's not the last video of that channel, but the fact that this project came out of it, uh, that we remixed it and made it our own and have a community-driven version. So thank you for pointing that out. We, I, I think we all feel similar way. Thank you, Mavka, for being honest and watching the video. Yeah, it's super flattering to be told that we are already inheriting Mike's legacy. <laughs> and speaking of which, our very first comment on this video, and I think the one that I'm at least the most proud of, is from PBS Idea Channel, official YouTube channel. They said, awesome work, team. So thank you. Someone someone get some champagne. It's party time. <laughs> hey, clap noises. <laughs> we'll, we'll put in some applause in post. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're really happy to have one episode out. We're already working on the second one. Um, like we said, more sources. And uh, if you want to be a part of it, of course, join in. If you just want to sit back and enjoy, we're, we're happy to do this for you. Um, and if you want to just hang out in the Discord uh, server or the forums, we're also just doing like book chats and, and video games. And you know, you can just hang out with some cool people.
So that's uh, all the comments for this week. Thank you so much for writing in. For right now, do you have any feedback on this format for comment responses? Because it's not just me doing it. It's not just Mike doing it. It's a community-driven thing. So how could we make this better? Would you rather like a live stream thing or just what do you want from a comment response? Let us know and we'll try our best. Thanks. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, kids. Favorites. <laughs>